Hello everyone, my name is Stephen Bell, aka Stakuyi, and welcome back to the first Aura History Untold Dev Diary for 2024. If this is your first time joining with us, then make sure to go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell, as we will be releasing new episodes regularly each month. And as a heads up, Aura is going to be featured in the upcoming Xbox Developer Direct on January 18th. You can catch the entire stream right here on the Aura History Untold YouTube channel, starting at 12 p.m. Pacific. And in today's episode, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking a bit of a step back and looking at grand strategy and the genre as a whole, from where it started to how modern games are expanding the genre with new ideas. And in order to help guide us through this journey, as well as explain some of these technical terms, I am very thrilled to introduce our guest for the day, Michelle Menard, the design director at Oxide Games. So Michelle, welcome back to the show. It's good to have you here again. Hi, Stephen. It's great to be back. Great to see you. And so, okay, Michelle, I know that you've been on several episodes here already, so hopefully the fans have a good idea of exactly who you are and what it is that you do at Aura, I would hope. So oh, today we're going to start with a bit of a different question. Can you go ahead and tell the audience a little about the history of like PC strategy games and why people enjoy them so much? I mean, I know I do. Obviously, um, games have been around forever, and especially simulation and strategy games have been around forever. They're some of the earliest board games that we have records of. Um, but that being said, for a period of time um, after the Industrial Revolution, a lot of board games are only children's board games, like, you know, ye olde shoots and ladders, monopolies, and all those things from your childhood. Um, and it really wasn't until a little later into, like, the mid-1900s that board games were again seen as a adult pastime, uh, really starting with Avalon Hill here in Maryland, just kind of down the road. Um, and they made specifically strategy and simulation titles. And with that um, kind of rebirth as gaming as an adult passion, when computers started to become more of a technological thing that was around people's houses, the first computer PC gaming, like really big thing, also started here in Maryland with Microprose, again, just down the road from where Oxide is right now. Hmm. And a lot of the people who worked at Avalon Hill then went over to work at Microprose and some of the very earliest, um, most dearly beloved kind of genre setting PC strategy titles were made right here at Microprose. Um, you know, Civilization, Master of Orion, all those things are kind of like the near and dearest to our hearts. Thank you, Microprose, for kind of like giving us everything, our childhood and <laughs> good stuff. Um, and so, yeah. And why do people like them? I mean, I think it really comes down to why do people like games? Why do people like challenges? Yep. These games are, you know, they're not just something, again, like a shoots and ladders or candy lane where basically you roll a die and do the thing and you're not thinking. Those are boring. That's just, I do a rote thing. Blech. Whereas strategy games really ask you to think, to plan, and to, you know, really own your experience. Like, how do you want to solve this problem? Hmm, let me think. I don't know. And it isn't something you're just being handheld through a little experience. You're really creating the experience as a co-agent in this thing with the developer. Like, we're not telling you how to play the game. We've just kind of put together some little systems. Say, what would you like to do? And so there's this really powerful moment where the player has to recognize a problem, I like analyze it and then come up with a plan and then see if that plan worked. And when it does, there's like the endorphins from that are amazing. And so, yeah, these are fun things to master to like give yourself little challenges and goals and then master. So I, that's why I think they're interesting and still to this day are like extremely popular. I don't think that I could agree with you more. Where does the term 4X come from? Because we talked about all these variety of different games, but what about 4X? Because that's largely what these games associated with Aura Civilization, all those generally get grouped under. Yeah, so the term is actually from 1993, um, and it came back to, again, Master of Orion. It wasn't something that, you know, the developers are sitting around in their office being like, what should we call this game? Like, I don't know. It was actually created, um, coined by Alan Imreich, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing his last name correctly, as a writer talking about um, Master of Orion. And he wanted to um, create kind of a really snazzy, um, snappy way to describe this to someone without having to go through like well first you have to expand this thing and then you got to research all these things over here and then build this stuff because then people are like Bleh. and so you want something that's really snappy and as a writer um this is you know predates clickbait but it was basically clickbait of the early 90s he was like well i know you know when people see certain things on print it grabs people's attention like triple x like oh! so he's like what if it's four x's because oh! then people will see it in print be like oh my gosh what is that and then it'll be edgy and awesome and it's really you know, it's not related to triple X whatsoever, but, you know, explore, expand, exploit and exterminate. And with that really just encapsulates the <laughs> dynamics of what you're doing, but with, Ooh, I'm being so like, Oh my gosh, I got to hide the magazine now under my bed. Cause my parents see this. I am so cool. Sort of, you know, nice edginess to it as well. So thank you, Ellen. 
I, I, I'm a little bit baffled in there because I didn't, <laughs> for whatever reason, I, obviously I grew up playing these games. I, uh, it's been one of my big passions of the course of life. I never bothered to look up the term. Everyone knows first person shooter <laughs> means like, you know, like FPS first person shooter is what it yeah. is. But for X, I, I didn't know that that's what it signified. Yes. <laughs> I, I was, why did I never question that? Okay, well, can you tell m us more about how those systems then work with Aura? Yeah, and so, you know, with Aura, one of our things was, you know, not just make a 4X game, but was really to, like, kind of look at what makes the genre core and then how to bring it a little bit more modern and more forward uh, to new players. And so the first thing we did was really look at what those four X's meant and what it meant to Ara. So, you know, Explorer, obviously, is super big and super important. Everyone loves exploring a map. It is, like, one of the best things to do um, in these games. Like, it's everyone's favorite. But then the problem is, is when you're done exploring the map, oftentimes these games, that's the end of the exploration dynamic completely. And then you're like, oh, that's sad. And so we wanted to look at ways to really bring exploration forward into other systems, which um, was where actually some of the inspiration for the technology system came through, um, from, was then giving players more ways to explore. Um, expand, obviously, you know, you want to make things bigger, get things cooler. We didn't really, you know, that's kind of self-explanatory with the map and getting more stuff, making new cities, getting more armies. You just want to out and like kind of manspread your way across the map. No problems there. Um, where we started to really hone in, though, was on the last two with Exploit and Exterminate. Um, we didn't really want to super focus on those two as a main aspect of the game. We wanted to go a little bit more beyond that and really look at more what are other more modern, like, you know, X's at this point we could bring that would then push R into a different sphere. Because a lot of these games, too, tend to be very heavily militaristic already. And we wanted to kind of carve out a new space for Ara. And so we came up with two other kind of additional X's to sort of like pivot away from those two original ones, which was experimentation and expression. Um, and with experimentation in general, that was really looking at um, kind of trying to address a core problem with that plagues a lot of the strategy games, which is optimal strategy. So as I mentioned before, a lot of people like these things because, you know, there's a problem to solve. It's a puzzle. There's something to master. But then when you do, you're done. And so a lot of people then stop playing once they've solved the game, um, which I don't blame them because that's half the fun is kind of figuring it out. And then once you've done, you start to do the same exact thing over and over and over again. It is the yeah, like, what is the meta basically. Play. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so we're like, well, what can we do to keep giving people a way to keep hitting those really fun mastery challenging puzzle moments where like there's always something new to figure out. There's always something to challenge and there's always something to be clever about. So we need to introduce ways that there's always a new thing to experiment with to play with which again came back a lot of ways to technology to crafting to like where can we do to always make the experience slightly different every single time you play so you can't just like run through a static tech tree you can't always click the same buttons you can't always employ the exact same strategy there has to be something different and then with expression um if you look at a lot of like games today there's always something in there that lets players really own that experience more and make it deeply their own and then also it isn't just like gameplay but also visually um and it gives her something they can share with people their friends or with uh community members online they can express themselves with the game as a form of media as well and so that led to things like you know were there things we can do with leaders or the things we can do with the living world how does building placement work can we actually basically make this game a form of visual expression as well and let the player really own this whole experience so that there's something cool and unique to share with others that kind of still using that 4x um, kind of pillar structure we did you know take what we think is like the core the best the greatest but then also try to expand it more into a different more modern era well thank you once again for joining us here michelle it is always a pleasure to have you on do you have any final words here before it is that you have to go oh thank you Stephen. it's always a pleasure to be here um so it's just you know in general the chat out to the community you guys are great it's always awesome to see your comments on these videos and elsewhere on the forums um and just a couple of quick notes dev direct will be out in just a couple of days so stay tuned for some really cool reveals there and yeah and just you know make sure you subscribe as steven said because we'll have a whole bunch of new stuff coming out and join the insider program if you haven't lots of content coming this year it'll be awesome and thank you all of you for watching we have a ton of great content that is lined up this year as we get closer to launch so i cannot wait for you all to experience this game for yourselves be sure to go ahead and subscribe to future Dev Diary episodes and follow us on the social media platforms of your choice. And also, don't forget to join the Insider Program, which you can do so by going to ourhistoryuntold.com. And don't forget to go ahead and wishlist Our History Untold on Steam. Thank you once again, and we will see you all next time.